Um, I'm with Microsoft in San Francisco. My office is actually just right down, the, right down the street from here. It's above the Westfield Shopping Mall. So if you're a local San Francisco person, you'll know that shopping mall. My desk is above the Vans Shoe Store. So I'm a local guy. I don't work out of Redmond. My email is matt.harrington at microsoft.com. And I am on Twitter at mh415. So if anything sounds interesting throughout this talk and later on you want to reach out, or if you ever need um, down the road, you think like, I wish I knew someone at Microsoft, feel free to just take a business card and, and ping me anytime. I'd love to keep in touch. So the talk will be about monitoring iOS and Android apps, but I'm going to be demoing using iOS. But everything that I talk about also applies to Android. And I have two slides. So first of all, there we go. So here's the situation. So I'm going to assume that you're an iOS developer or an Android developer, or you work at a company that has a strong mobile presence, or you know someone, and you want to just learn about iOS and Android development. So you're working on your killer new app. Your head's down um, on that. Let's say you're on iOS. On top of that, you're probably learning the new design changes in iOS 7. And both of those things are probably a full-time job. So there's really a lot to learn about perfecting your application, making it look good. But on top of this, you need to add things like authentication and cloud storage, push notifications. And then you also need deep insight into your mobile application. So how people are using it, what buttons they're clicking, what's working, what doesn't. You want all of that. So you can build mobile apps faster by using turnkey solutions that will provide push notifications, cloud storage, authentication, that kind of stuff. But oftentimes, you're really limited to what you're given um, in, in that turnkey solution. It's very hard to customize it. But as I said, we also want to um, instrument our applications, right? So a cool thing that was announced last night by uh, Scott Guthrie at Microsoft's keynote talk was that you don't have to have any kind of compromise here. So there's a new partnership between New Relic and Microsoft. So you can use a turnkey solution, such as the one from us called Windows Azure Mobile Services, to do the back end, um, the back end as, a, as a service, such as push notifications, authentication, and all of, all of that stuff. But you can actually integrate New Relic deeply into that right now and, um, and get the deep um, instrumentation and analytics that you want out of it. So I'm going to be um, doing a, a couple minute overview of what uh, Mobile Services is and how it fits into, the, into this big picture. And then I'm going to drop down into code, into, into Xcode here and show you some demo applications and hopefully teach you something that, will, um, that you could use even tonight as you go home. So just to set the stage here, to level set things, I think that we all know, since we're at this conference, we know about the benefits of, of adding analytics to your applications. And I really liked the stories that Scott used last night in his keynote about, um, I hope that you guys were able to catch that. He had two stories about um, circumstances where, where um, analytics would have helped. And one was uh, bombers in World War II and about how 6% of them didn't come back and they were trying to figure that out. And the second fun one was about how the Halo team was trying to figure out how can they get people to play Halo longer. So they just, they didn't really know. So they started, um, they turned on some analytics. They started instrumenting Halo. And they wanted to explore different hypotheses. And at first they thought, well, if we add more guns to the game, people will like it more and they'll play it more, right? But they actually found out that was not the case except in Texas, which I thought was pretty funny. And um, I used to live in Texas, so I'm, not, I'm certainly not picking on them, but I just thought it was an interesting uh, observation. And they found out that people actually play Halo more if you provide players with more opportunities to interact with other players, so with their friends. So it was, they tried to emphasize the social component to Halo. And, um, and then they greatly increased the, the amount of interaction and gameplay on Halo. So it's vitally important to do this instrumentation. So what I'm going to be talking about is this bit in the green here in the center. So on the left here, you have iOS applications, so on iPhone or iPad. And on the bottom, you have Android applications on phones or tablets or something like that. And in the middle here, we have something called Azure Mobile Services. So Azure is Microsoft's cloud offering. Um, it's very big. It has many different components to it. And the one little corner that I'm going to be talking about is mobile services. So this is our backend as a service offering. And it's completely platform agnostic. So I'm presenting on a Mac here. I'm going to be demoing um, Xcode and Objective-C and iOS application. Um, it's, not a, it's not a Microsoft only thing by any stretch of the imagination. So mobile services is this backend as a service provider that does this push notification for you, authentication, add storage, and things like that. And on the right here, we have four things called out 
So there's a SQL database, blob storage, there's a NoSQL database, virtual machines, so you can run Linux virtual machines on top of Windows Azure. You can run uh, Windows virtual machines if you like. So essentially anything that you can do on your own, in your own data center, you can just forklift and put it up to Azure. And you put Azure Mobile Services in front of it and it makes it trivially easy to have your mobile clients, iOS and Android applications, talk to these backends. So not only do those four orange things fit into this, this world here, but you can add whatever, you, whatever else you like. So I have applications that go out and call third-party um, APIs. Um, you, you could really, there's, there's nothing that limits you. Then the last slide I have before I dive into code here is uh, a, deep di a deeper dive into what exactly that green bit in the center is. So what is mobile services? So as I mentioned, it allows you to very easily add a database backend. So Users these days expect their experiences to be where they can use your application on their mobile phone, they can go to their tablet, that they can go to their laptop, they can go everywhere and they want the data to follow them. They want their data to be moved around. It's really tricky to do with mobile applications because you have access to the local storage in your mobile app, but how do you sync that up with the cloud? So mobile services allows you to um, very easily sync up with a, um, a, uh, a SQL database in the cloud. Notifications. So doing push notifications on iOS and Android can be kind of tricky. You can be an expert in either one of those two things. But imagine that you're trying to support um, iOS and Android applications, and you want to just have one central place where you do push notifications. So the, uh, the Cardinals won last night in the World Series. And imagine you wrote, you wrote a uh, sports app, and you wanted to send out a push notification. Um, Azure Mobile Services will allow you to just write that with a few lines of code on a server, and then uh, Mobile Services handles all of the backend plumbing and stuff like that to do the push notifications to both iOS and Android. The big one, authentication. So authentication code is pretty tricky to write. So each of the big providers, such as Facebook and Twitter and Google, have variations on their authentication APIs. You have to become an expert in OAuth, and each of those providers will implement OAuth slightly differently. There's different versions of OAuth out there. It can be pretty, te pretty tedious to write this code and do it correctly, but Azure Mobile Services does this for you um, with really just a couple of lines of code. The advantage of this is that you can have your users authenticate, for example, with Twitter, which I'll be showing, showing here, and then your application can have access to their, uh, their Twitter contacts and their friends. So um, given the appropriate permission by the user, you could use their social networks to promote your application. Server logic. So you can write, uh, Azure Mobile Services relies hev heavily on Node.js. So you can write uh, server logic little um, bits of code in JavaScript, put them on Azure Mobile Services, and then intercept the requests that either come to and from your database, for example. And I'll show you a little bit about this. So um, if you can write Node, you can write one of these little basically extensions for Azure Mobile Services. It scales, so you can start out with a free tier of Azure Mobile Services, and you can grow to really uh, as to, the, to the largest mobile apps out there. Azure has eight data centers worldwide, four in North America, two in Europe, two in Asia. And we've also announced plans for, for mainland China, which is huge. So there's a huge global footprint here. Of course, it does logging and diagnostics. And then there's something like a cron scheduler there. So if you want to run something every 15 minutes or every hour to do something, uh, you can totally do that too. So that's the last slide, and now let me drop here into a demo. So as I was saying, Scott Guthrie last night explained the, the why analytics are important and why a backend as a service might be important, and I'm going to explain to you how, how to get started, what you're going to do here. So the first thing you'll want to do is um, go to windowsazure.com, sign up. There's a free trial, and you can sign in. And if you go down here, you'll click New, you click Store, and you'll see all of these choices here. So these are all um, collaborations that Microsoft has with tons and tons of, uh, of third parties out there. And there we go, New Relic right here. So this is how easy it is to add New Relic support to your, to your back end. So you'll just select New Relic. You click on this arrow here. You can try out the free version. Uh, you, can, you can be billed for it, and the billing will show up on your Azure bill. And you can just walk through this to, tr to, to sign up for New Relic. Or you can go to newrelic.com and sign up there. So that's how you'll add it to your service. But let me, since I've already done that, I'm going to go over here to go over here to another account where I'm signed in. So everything that you want to do um, for configuring Azure will be done in this portal here. It's all web-based. You can do it from your Mac. You can do it from wherever you like. 
here's what I'll be talking about here, this mobile services here, which is the fourth thing down on the left. So I click mobile services. I click this plus sign here in the lower left corner. And this is how I got to the store before. But I'm going to click mobile service and then create. You need to pick a URL. And this is a URL that's not given out to uh, your end users. So no one's ever going to hit this URL except your mobile apps themselves. So I'm going to call it Matt, um, Matt Future Stack. So you need to choose a database. We give you the option to have a 20 megabyte free database, which I've already done for this account. So I'm going to create a new one, create a new database. And I'm going to put that in the Western US. You could choose to put that database elsewhere if you like. We'll stick with the default database name of Matt Future Stack DB. That database has to go on a server. It can go on a server that I already have, or I can create a new one. I'll create a new one here. I'm going to put the database in the same data center as the Azure Mobile Service. So this is a, uh, a problem here. You don't want to put your database in Asia and your Azure Mobile Service in North America, because then every time someone hits your Azure Mobile Service in North America, it's going to have to query that database under a cable running underneath the Pacific Ocean. And that latency will be pretty bad there, right? So put your database in the same place as your Azure Mobile Service. And you can see in the lower left corner here, there's these green bars which are going up and down, which means that Azure is, is happily creating this stuff. So what's happening? Azure is standing up this Azure Mobile Service front end, or, or back end, rather. And it's creating, a, um, it's creating a database server, and it's putting a database on top of that. It does take maybe 10 seconds to do. So it should be done in just a second here. OK. Nope, not yet. I could do Scott's trick from last night. Five, four, three. Three, 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 two, there we go. <laughs> two, one, zero. Two, one, zero. Yeah. Blast off. Okay, so what I did there is I just clicked on the mobile service that I created. It's the bottom one here. The ones up here are ones that I've created before. So here's where we'll be living for a little bit. When you first log on here, you can see in the top here, there's the name of my mobile service. It's called Matt Future Stack. And you get a menu below that, and we get what's called the quick start uh, screen right here. In the middle here, you can see all of the platforms that are supported, and I'm going to use iOS today. So I've highlighted iOS. Under Get Started here, I get two choices. Create a new iOS app or connect, uh, connect an existing iOS app. So I'm going to create a new one here, which is going to um, build a to-do application and send it down to me, and I'll be spending some time in that. Or if you have an existing iOS application, just read these instructions here. If you've, if you've used uh, New Relic, you, can you know that their documentation is excellent, and it just takes you know, three, four, five minutes or something like that to add New Relic to all of the platforms that they support. Same thing here. You can very easily add Azure Mobile Service support to an existing iOS application. You simply just um, uh, link in the libraries, or the framework rather, and then add a couple of lines of code to do authentication, and, and you're good to go. So I'm going to choose Create a New iOS Application. So step one here, it says Get Xcode. I got that already. So step two, I'm going to create a to-do to -do item table. So again, Azure Mobile Services was that green dot in the center of one of my earlier slides, and it sits on top of a SQL database. So what I've done here is created a table in that database, and it's called to-do item, where all of the to-do items are going to be stored. Now, step three, I click Download, and Azure will create this to-do item application, this to-do uh, application, put my correct credentials in it, and send it right down to me. So here we are downloading. Great. Let's unzip this guy and go into it. So this is a, just a regular old iOS application. Let's open up Xcode here. And I'm going to go into the implementation here. And I can probably hide this stuff on the right there. Great. I hope that text is, is large enough to read. So before I walk through some of the code here, I'll just run this application. Let's change it to a 4-inch iPhone. I'm just going to run this application so you can see what it is that we've done. Oh, simulator is in use from another project. Let me just stop that. OK. Linking building and then go. So here we are in the simulator. This is our to-do item application. So I once heard someone say this, that a uh, to-do item, or to-do application is the new hello world of, of like the 2000s or 2010s. And um, it's, it's much better than a hello world. So what are the things that we have to do? We have to buy milk. 
we want to um, um, build app. You know, I'll just add like three things or so. Pay bills. And what's happening here is I'm adding these things. It's being added to the Azure mobile service. And that database is in the Western US someplace. And then it's pulling that data back down and displaying it here. So this is all live, uh, real time. It's hitting Azure mobile service as we talk. I'm going to swipe here to mark one of these things as complete. And we'll add one more thing. Um, try um, new stuff, whatever. OK, good. There we go. Now I will pop back over here to this portal here. And let's take a look at what happened here. I'll click on this link here called data. And you can see these are going to be the tables that are sitting on top of the database that I created earlier. There's the, the uh, to-do item table. Let's go into here. And we should see four or so items here. So yeah, there's buy milk, build app, pay bills, and try new stuff. And you can see under the complete column here, it's false, true, false, false. So this, what I did there is I downloaded this to-do item application. I put some data in it, pumped it up to the cloud, and it's sitting here. If I want to take a look at it, I could just go to browse here just fine. Um, or <coughs> I could manage the data through any, o any other tools that talk to relational databases. I mean, there must be tons of them out there. So you don't have to use this website interface if you don't want to. You can use a custom application. There's a REST API. You can make your own. You can do what you like. Now let me click on this button here that says script, or this tab that says script. Now remember what I mentioned. And let me try to up that font. Remember what I mentioned earlier when I was introducing Azure Mobile Services. You can write custom server logic in Node, in JavaScript, which will intercept requests that come to the database and also intercept requests that are sent back out from the database. So here we have a function called insert, and this is going to be called every time data is inserted into the database. And you can do whatever you like here. For example, you could intercept the incoming database request and you could add more data to it. Um, you could intercept the incoming database request and go ping a third-party API. You could do whatever you like. Here, it's nothing's being done. On line three, it just is calling request.execute and passing the data in uh, without being changed. So now I want to show you how to add New Relic to this. So I'm going to drop the font back down. There we go. I go to, um, I go to configure here. You can do a lot of interacting with Azure Mobile Services through the portal here. You can use that online text editor there to add your, your node scripts. Um, and if you want to if you want to add new relic, go to the, uh, go to the dashboard here, and you can see actually there's some some traffic that came through already just from the demo right there, but I'm going to show you cooler graphs in a minute. You click on this link here on the right here that says set up source control. And this will just take a second. So there's a more sophisticated way to interact with your Azure mobile service, which is using Git. So right now it's standing up Git, and it's going to create a Git repo in Azure mobile service. Once that's ready, I'm going to get a URL, which I'll clone. I'm going to drop down to command line here, use Git, and pull down what is up there. Then I can make all of the changes that I want to in Node to my scripts, put them into source control where they're safe, or I can add new functionality. I can add new Node modules. So I'm just going to run npm install from the command line here to put the new Relic module in there. Any other kind of third-party mod um, Node module that you want to add is just fine, too. OK, so there's the Git URL. I'm going to copy that. I'm just going to make sure that everything went there OK. Yep, we're good. And I'll drop down to the command line. I'm in a directory here where I'm going to put all of my Azure Mobile Services scripts. Git clone that URL. This should just take a second. As long as I enter my password correctly. There we go. It's pulled down the Git repo. And let's go into it. And this was called Matt Future Stack, right? There we go. All right. We have a directory here called service. Let's just go in there and take a look. And we can go into table. And there is some JSON, which represents our to-do item right there. You can also add uh, permissions here, so you could lock it down so that only authenticated users can access your mobile service. You can do whatever you like. But what I'm going to do is npm install new relic. 
So the announcement from New Relic was th this week is that their, their Node.js Node support went live. And when we heard that New Relic was, going, was working on this, we got really excited because Azure Mobile Services heavily relies on Node. So we could use the, the New Relic Node module that they were writing, plug it into Azure Mobile Services, and then boom, we get great New Relic support. There. So I'm going to uh, add that, git add, and commit. And a push. And what I've done here is I've downloaded the new Relic node module. I've added it to my project. I've committed. And now I'm pushing it back up to Azure Mobile Services. And this should succeed. Deployment successful. Good. Now I'm going to drop back over here and go to configure. And there's one step here where I, where I need to add in the, uh, the new Relic API key that I'm using. So. Let's see. It is off my screen here. Arr, there we go. So new relic license key. And there you can see all my passwords. And now this is on video. And I have to change my passwords. It's OK. All right, so I'm just going to add that and save. So what have I done here again? I've added the new relic node module. It's running up there. And I've just typed in what my um, API key is. We're ready. Let's drop back to Xcode here. Run this again, or actually stop. Run this again. It should pull up the three or four um, to-do items that we had there originally. There we go, buy milk. Let's add a couple more things here. So we want to do, do taxes. OK, I can't think of anything exciting. So audience, call out something. What should we do? Vote on this talk. Ooh. <laughs> Vote. Vote thumbs up on this. There you go. I like your suggestion. No swaying the voters? <laughs> How about sway voters? All right. Sway voters. Uh, and I've already bought milk, so I'll mark that one as complete. Good. Boom. Now let's drop back over here. And I'm going to um, go to New Relic. There we go. Here I am I'm in, in the New Relic portal. I just was logged on already. And you can see Matt Future Stack is there. It does take, the data has already been sent to New Relic, but um, New Relic will take a couple of minutes to parse that before it starts displaying. So this should be blank right now. But in the meantime, just like Julia Child will say, put something in the oven and then she has a cake already made, um, let's go into one that I already have here. Um, like Event Buddy, for example. And you should be able to see some traffic here. So Event Buddy is an application that we did earlier. We've added New Relic to it. We added the API key. Boom. So the backend Azure Mobile Service is now doing all sorts of New Relic instrumentation uh, analytics. And you can do, this is, we're just using the default sort of settings now for New Relic, but you can learn the New Relic API, and you can do all sorts of more sophisticated analytics if you like to. Great. So we've added New Relic support. We've run the app and generated some data. While it's still being, while New Relic is processing that data, I want to prove to you that this actually worked. Let me just show you how easy it is to add this to an existing application. So here's the, pretend this is an existing application you have. And all you do is create uh, an MS client, MS like Microsoft, and you're going to pass in the application URL string, and you're going to pass in your application key. You download that from the portal. You're going to add in the framework called uh, Windows Azure Mobile Services framework. And then all of these supporting libraries are added for you. And to actually do the insert, let's pull up the, uh, the, the um, list view controller here, the, the to-do list view controller. And let's find, I think it's called add item. There's item text. On add, I think they call it there. Yeah. So on add is the method that's called when you're going to add an item to it. You scroll down. Great. And all you simply do is create an NS dictionary, and you put the key value pairs in there of what you want to store. And then you pass that to uh, the to-do service um, class, and you call add item, add, odd, add item on that, pass in the NS dictionary, and you're good to go. It's really that simple. It's those two lines of code. So well, four, basically. So you create the context. 
you're passing in your credentials there, you're creating an NS dictionary, you're gonna pass that to the mobile service and then it goes live. So hopefully by now, if we drop over to the real one here, Matt Future Stack, and let's just look at the last 30 minutes here. There we go. Yay, it worked. Okay, so that's a pretty trivial example that you could do uh, tonight. You simply just go to the Azure Mobile Service site, download that quick start thing. You could even use this to um, build your own applications. You can use this code. In fact, um, I entered with some, uh, some teammates uh, in, in a hackathon and actually started with this and, and won the hackathon. So um, it, it's actually really easy to start adding things like push notifications and, and storing data and things like that. In fact, let me just point out how you're going to add push notifications, or sorry, authentication. So here I am back on the portal, and I'm going to go to identity. So we support um, Microsoft accounts, Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts, and Google accounts. So in the demo, which I'll show next, it uses Twitter. And you simply just paste in your consumer key, consumer secret, and you make a couple of lines of code. You insert a couple of lines of code, and then boom, instantly your iOS application has Twitter support. You can log on with Twitter. And the way that you would learn that is going back to the main page here. And this is where you can create a new iOS application or connect an existing one. And there's two links below that, how to add authentication and how to add push notifications. That's how you do that. So OK, we've shown you the sort of trivial hello world here. And now let me show you something more sophisticated. Here's an app called Event Buddy. Actually, I think I might have the old one still running. So let me end that one. There we go. Event Buddy. A little bit more sophisticated application that does things that are not trivial. It's not the hello world. There we go. So this application already has authentication built into it, this Twitter um, authentication, which is really, really easy to add. Again, you just paste in your, your API key and your consumer secret, add a couple of lines of code, and you're good to go. Let's log on here. And Event Buddy is a sort of conference uh, companion application. And it's been set up with some data already. I've clicked on Future Stack, and here's some talks. There's Scott Goo's talk from last night, uh, Lou's talk from yesterday. Uh, this is a talk that I did not give, but I called it data visualization for some reason. And uh, so let's just add a session. So um, monitor iOS apps. And I'll keep the default description there. I'm going to add my Twitter handle and then return and save session here, right? So there we go. It's gone out and it's created a new session called Monitor iOS Apps, and it's hit Twitter, and it's downloaded my Twitter profile picture and put it right there. And then if we drill into it, you can see the, um, the, the event description and things like that. So I've added, a, added a, a, a session there, and what I'd like to do is show you a more sophisticated usage of the insert scripts. So on the left here, I've switched over from that quick start that I was doing before. I'm going to click on data. And you see that the, this application has four tables. The earlier one just had one called to-do items. So we're, here we have channel, which is used for push notifications, event, so that's where the future stack conference is listed, rating, so each session's rating is stored there, and uh, the session itself is here. So let's drill into session, and we should see four sessions here. Great, there we go. Take a look at script here. So I'm selected script, and then I'm selecting insert. So there are, are also um, scripts that you can run on update, delete, and read, but let's look at insert here. So in the example I used earlier, there was really just one line of code there that said request.execute, but this is much more sophisticated. We're pulling in a, a module here. You can see on insert, all of this Node.js code will run. And I can summarize it by saying that it goes out and sets up a connection to Twitter, and then it calls an API at Twitter. And then it figures out what's this person's Twitter handle, and it gets their, uh, a link to their Twitter uh, profile picture. And then it downloads, it changes the, uh, the text normal to bigger in that URL, and so it downloads the bigger version of it. And then it appends it to the session data before it's sent in. So when I set up the session data, I only said what's the name of the talk, the description, and the Twitter handle. But Azure Mobile Services has, has uh, been configured to go out and download more data too. So it's massaging this data before it's putting into the server. So Anything you can do in Node, you can put in front of um, your, you can put in between your mobile clients and Azure Mobile Services here. So really, the sky's the limit. So let's just take a look at some of the data that gets sent, uh, that we that we're going to get in um, 
New Relic here. So that application has already been instrumented with New Relic too. This was kind of an interesting little thing here. So this is this event buddy application. It's been running for a while. Um, and this data is live. Let's go to um, let's go to the mobile part of it. Excuse me. So that that data we were looking at there was New Relic information from the Azure Azure Mobile Services backend. But I'm going to drill into the uh, the mobile client here. So that application already also already has the New Relic client or the New Relic uh, um, um, client support baked into it. And you can see here's where we were running the application just a second ago. Let's click on errors. Really cool thing about New Relic here is that you can use it to find. Let me load this. Ah, thank you. Great. Thank you from the audience there. My time slice was too small, and I was like, what's happening, demo gods? So this event buddy application was written by uh, the Azure team a while ago. And um, it's just sort of a more sophisticated demo, like a hands-on lab. You know, you can, you can download instructions on how to build this. And then um, we started running this recently, and we saw that there were these errors coming up from Twitter here. You know? So this is, this is data being sent to New Relic from the iOS client. And here's some JSON. It's basically a trace that tells you what the error is. And it's coming back from Twitter saying, sorry, that page does not exist. And we were like, what is going on here? And then we remembered that, I think it was last spring, Twitter changed one of the APIs that they used. Uh, they used to allow sort of anonymous access to Twitter where you could pull down anyone's information or something like that. Then they locked this down. And um, there's part of the code here which still uses the old API. And Twitter just, instead of um, redirecting you or anything, just says, uh, sorry, that page does not exist. So here's a real life example where we had forgotten that that Twitter code was in the event buddy application. And we only found out when we baked um, New Relic support into it. So it really works. Um, so what have we shown here? So if you want to have uh, if you want to stand up a mobile application really quickly, because you're really heads down focused on your mobile application and how to make it better, how to incorporate the new design changes in iOS 7 and things like that, um, you can really save a lot of time by using one of these turnkey solutions that does um, this backend stuff for you, push notifications, authentication, and data storage, and things like that. But you don't have to give up any kind of control here. And you can also um, have great support with New Relic because New Relic's announcement of supporting their, uh, their node module. And since Azure Mobile Services has a deep integration with Node, you can marry the two together, get all of the control that you want, but also all the really quick results and turnaround from using a, a backend as a service provider. So I think I'm standing in between you guys and lunch, but um, I'd be happy to take any questions if you guys have any. And like I said earlier, feel free to grab my business card if you want to keep in touch. Um, and best of luck to you. Thanks a lot for coming. <laughs> Question here. Right, so the question was about data segregation. So how do you keep the data separate from all of your users or from different clients or whatever? So it's up to you. So what you would do here would be um, in perhaps in that one table, you would add a column to it that would just add the, the authenticated Twitter user name or something like that. And then when your app is running, it's going to do a, a query. Since it's just SQL, you would say, give me everything that matches the Twitter handle MH415 or whatever you like. That would be one way to do it. Um, you, um, you probably wouldn't want to segregate out and create two mobile services, one for iOS and one for Android, because then you're use losing the benefit of having you know, one sort of place to push out, push notifications and things like that. Um, but Yes, right, right. So I didn't get into security here, but there's, uh, I think, four ways to lock this down. So it could be unlocked and it's open to anyone. You could have this be only available to people who have the API key, to only authenticated users, and only to people who are those cron scripts running in the background or the people coming in through the admin portal here. So. Yeah, the key is definitely baked into the app. In fact, here in Xcode, um, well, just trust me, the, 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 uh, the API key for this, uh, for both Event Buddy and for the to-do application are baked in there. And when you add this to your own application, you would go to the portal and get that one line of code. We make it for you, and we just say cut and paste this into your app, and that would lock it down to just people who have that API key. 
combining that with user authentication like Facebook, Twitter, or whatever would be how you would um, keep things safe and, and secure. Thanks. Okay, thanks a lot, guys.